Well, welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are back with the quail, and I'm going to attempt to answer the question, how do you tell the boys from the girls? Okay, not easily. <laughs> quail are a little tricky. It's raining. Damien, don't help me. Don't help me, Damien. Sorry, there's a cat helping. Anyway, so we're going to try and talk about how to tell the boys from the girls, okay? So it's really kind of tricky with quail. They are not sexable at hatch. Don't let anybody tell you they are because they're absolutely not. Okay, you cannot tell the boys from the girls when they hatch. So if you're buying day-old quail chicks, nope, you can't tell the difference. Doesn't matter what the breeder tells you, oh, these are all hens. No, they're not. You cannot tell the difference. Absolutely not. You can't tell the difference by feathers, by their colors, or by their vent. It doesn't matter. When they are just little babies, you're rolling the, the dice here. But at about two or three weeks, some colors can be sexed by their color pattern. This does not apply to all Cortunix quail. All right? Not all Cortunix quail colors can be feather sexed. Like this, that silver, that silver there, she cannot be feather sexed. That's a girl, but you can't actually tell that by looking at her feathers. Okay? Some can be. So some pharaohs, so, and the cinnamons, and the Italians. So someone like, not the white one, but the one beside, those two beside the white one. That one's a cinnamon, and that one there is just a regular pharaoh or Egyptian, depending on what you want to call them. Those ones you can feather sex. Okay, the boys have a rust-colored chest, and the girls have spots. So that one is a boy that just ran out there. That's a boy, because that has a rust-colored chest. But this brown, ready brown one there, that's a girl because it has spots on the chest. Okay, you can see them a little bit better out here. That one's a girl. Down back there's boy. See the rust on his chest? That's a boy. This one has spots on her tummy. So that's a girl. It's hard to see from this angle, but I promise that's a girl. Um, some colors can be sexed by their faces. So... Manchurians and Italians have almost a mask on their face. That's a cinnamon, not a Manchurian or Italian. I don't really have Manchurians and Italians right now. I don't find their colors super attractive, but I'll put up a couple of pictures while this video is running so you can see what they look like. They can be sexed by the colors on their faces, not the colors on their chests. Uh, the boys have a brown face or a brown stripe on their face, and the girls have a black stripe on their face. Those are the only ones that can be sexed by color. That's it, okay? No one else can be sexed by color. Your next best bet is actually listening for the crow. These guys do crow. Um, you haven't had it on video yet because they're not crowing at me, and it's not breeding season, so they don't really care. But when they do crow, it'll start around five to six weeks of age, and it's kind of a three-tone thrill. Okay, I'm not going to try to mimic it. I'll just sound like an idiot. But you can actually Google quail crow. Uh, they lift their head up and they make kind of a three-toned, warbling, thrill kind of sound. It's really interesting. It's a really neat sound. I actually really like the sound. That's why one of the reasons I keep quail. Anyone that's doing that particular crow is a boy. Regardless of color pattern, they're a boy. Only boys do that. Females do not crow in Cortunix quail. Hi, Winter. You have shown up. You're not on video that often. Everybody say hi to Winter. Because he's going to take off. He does not really love the camera. That's fine. You went inside? Everyone went inside. Everyone went inside while I was talking to Winter. So your final way after the crowing. So if you crow your boy, that's the rule. Okay. After the crowing, the only other way, if they're not feather sexable and you can't catch anyone crowing, Winter, don't help. Sorry, I'm not going to let the cats in there just because they're a pain in the butt to get out. Yeah, we're just going to keep that closed for a little while. Anyway, <laughs> the only other way is vent sexing. I'm going to put up an image, and hopefully I don't love vent sexing, and I'm not going to do it right now because it's cold, and I have to wear gloves right now. Okay, I'm actually going to walk around to the other side of the quail coop. Might be able to get a better image of the quail. While I'm going, I'll just tell you that with the vent sexing, it's not difficult to do, but it can be annoying. Okay, I gotta go through a bush. 
that's fun. Ha ha ha. Can we kiss your quail in there? Hello, quail. Anyway, so it can be kind of annoying. It can be done at eight weeks or older. It's not great to do it outside of breeding season because you might be wrong. But even during breeding season, you can be wrong. So just let me explain a little bit. When you check the vent of a boy, it, he'll have a relatively small vent and he'll have a lump below. And when you push on this lump, there'll be kind of a foamy secretion. A girl will have a larger vent, no lump, and no foam, unless she was recently bred. That's why I'm saying you can be wrong. Okay, so you can vent sex, you can feather sex, or I just wait for everyone to crow. I spent a lot of time out here. I know who's a boy and a girl based on who crows. You can also kind of, by trial and error, isolate different, different quail and see who lays an egg. If it lays an egg, it's a girl. That's just the rule in chicken and quail world. <laughs> so... You can add, there's Moustache has joined us, Princess Orange, Damien's back. It's quite the group. But yes, you can absolutely tell by the crowing, and that's what I wait for. If they're not feather sexable, feather sexing is the easiest if they're a color that's feather sexable. If they're not feather sexable, then I just wait for the crow, because if they'll crow eventually. Spend some time with them. And they'll crow eventually. Hi, Gwen. So that's what I do. I just wait for the crow. I recommend you do that too. Because anything else is actually really annoying. So that's it for Anderson Acres for the day. We will hopefully talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> hopefully it won't be raining. I'm not enjoying the rain right now. Till tomorrow. Bye-bye.